companies had already licensed it for the ideas that we had been pitching for. Um, and then on my notepad, I had animals written down and I pitched that idea that we could use it in animal care. Um, and everyone kind of just stopped on the phone call and, you know, no one had wanted to kind of move it one notch over from human health to animal health care. Um, and so that's kind of where the idea began. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and my guest today is a military veteran, a TCU student who loves animals, and he has a strong desire to make a difference. Meet Dylan Jones, one of the minds behind Animal Cloud Device Connectivity, or Animal Cloud. Animal Cloud is using military software designed to monitor the health of soldiers to track the health of service animals, particularly dogs and horses. Just launched in April of 2020, Animal Cloud is providing a new way to track the vital signs of service animals through software licensed from the United States Air Force. Dylan, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Hey, thanks so much, Cameron. I'm uh, really, really excited to be here. Um, I really got to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on your show and tell our story. Very good. Well, it is uh, great to have you on the show. But before we dive into Animal Cloud, let us talk a little bit about uh, your military background. Uh, Tell me about your experiences in the armed services and and then how that kind of led into what you're doing now. Yeah, so um, that's a great question. When I was uh, 18, I signed up to join the Air Force. Um, Then I got the privilege to get shipped down to boot camp in Lackland uh, in San Antonio. Uh, And then after that, I got assigned my job, which was in construction. So I went to Gulfport, Mississippi, spent about a year there uh, learning um, the construction trade, carpentry and welding, masonry, um, all of that. And then after that, uh, I got to go to Italy, uh, spent three years in Italy, and then I uh, got stationed in Korea, spent a year in Korea. Um, and then I finished up, uh, my last assignment was in Hawaii. Um, and I had a couple of uh, deployments to the Middle East uh, in between there. And throughout that uh, experience, I really learned um, the value of teamwork and camaraderie, um, how large organization can work together to accomplish uh, a single mission. Um, And so after separating from the service to move back uh, home to Fort Worth, I um, didn't really know it, but I had all of that stuff like instilled in me. Um, And when I got to TCU, I was kind of just able to let it take over and let, let the school take over and do its thing. So it was um, a really great experience um, in my twenties to be a part of the air force. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was just a great experience um, to be able to serve. Well, well, thank you for your service. So you uh, went into the service, uh, did your time in the U S air force, and now you've come back to go to school at TCU where you met some of your co-founders. Uh, obviously, TCU has uh, very strong programs to support entrepreneurship and innovation. But what compelled you to attend TCU and, and what programs were you involved with that allowed you to meet your co-founders and uh, and that led to the creation of Animal Cloud? Yeah, so I um, originally am from Fort Worth. Um, and so like my mom said growing up, I used to always say I was going to go to TCU. And she was like, yeah, you know, like you know how expensive that school can be. So it was always kind of like a running joke. And then I ended up going. Um, and then, uh, I really got this entrepreneurial spirit from my dad. He owned his, uh, uh, tractor business for about 30 years and just growing up and watching him do that. Um, I think kind of instilled that in me. So as I was leaving the military, I knew I wanted to go and be an entrepreneur and TCU was just the perfect place to do that at. Um, and so I was in, um, my entrepreneurial classes, um, with Professor Bonos and Professor D'Souza, um, really just uh, soaking it up, learning everything that is there to learn. And I was going through some of those classes with uh, Chris Matos, who is our co-founder. Um, and we were learning about uh, a website called TechLink uh, Center, where you could commercialize government technology. 
Um, and so Chris and I were really bonding um, on our mutual military experience, um, you know, eating chicken wings at Buffalo Bros, uh, things like that. And we decided like, you know, we should uh, pursue this. So we begin to uh, get onto TechLink Center. And that's a website that has a bunch of U.S. military patents on it. Um, and we were just combing through them all. Um, and that's where we found the licensing agreement. And um, then we began to just uh, pitch pitch ideas for our business um, in business competitions at TCU. So we were doing the create business competition. Um, and that was a really great experience. It kind of gave us our initial funding. Um, and it really helped us ideate around where we're gonna where we're gonna take this licensing agreement. Um, so I think that that's kind of, what you know compelled me about T compelled me about TCU and kind of you know the classes I was taking to to get this idea up and off the ground and get started. So yeah, so that's great. So you guys are sitting there eating some uh, some buffalo wings, and what was the initial idea that popped up? And and then how did you? What were the next steps that you took to take those from an idea, probably on the back of a of a, a greasy napkin? to yeah. what has now become Animal Cloud. Yeah, so uh, that that was it. Like we just, uh, you know, in, in an earlier class, we learned about ideating and how that works. And so we just started brainstorming a ton of ideas, a uh, ton of different markets that we could take uh, this technology into. Um, and then essentially we started to pitch it at business competitions, seeing what was getting traction. Um, and then we also pitched it back to TechLink um, for the commercialization plan to help begin the writing uh, of that. And we, we initially were thinking like, well, let's go into, you know, um, maybe we can use this on airplanes or cruise ships or anywhere you might be displaced from people and you would need uh, this type of software. And what happened was, is we were pitching this idea and companies had already licensed it for the ideas that we had been pitching for. Um, and then, on my notepad, I had animals written down and I pitched that idea that we could use it in animal care. Um, and everyone kind of just stopped on the phone call and, you know, no one had wanted to kind of move it one notch over from human health to animal health care. Um, and so that's kind of where the idea began. Um, and then it sort of just started growing out from there to where it is today. So I, I want to ask you a little bit about the partnerships that you formed to get this company off the ground. Obviously, you're a you're an Air Force veteran, but how did you connect with the U.S. Air Force about this technology? Did you know about it when you were in the service, or did you just find it on the TechLink website and and kind of went from there? We found this technology uh, on the TechLink website, and it was funny. You know, it was probably like two a.m. Um, you know, after class, like just digging through hundreds and hundreds of these patents to try to figure out like, what is something that we could actually start that would be viable, that could lead to the creation of a company that would be long lasting and kind of serve our purpose of wanting to, um, you know, do, do good in the world. Right. Um, and so once we found it, uh, I called Chris <laughs> at 2 AM and, we used to always say like entrepreneurship happened at night because it always seemed like the after you've done everything in your day, now you can work on your ideas. Um, and so we were like talking about it, uh, going back and forth about all of these different things. And, um, you know, I never really got a formal introduction into into the Air Force uh, until after I wrote the commercialization plan. So a commercialization plan is basically just a big document that you write that says, you know, what's the market opportunity? How are you going to do this? What are your milestones and goals? Uh, things like that. Um, and then I just submitted it off to the Air Force and then just kind of went back or, you know, through normal life. Uh, and then uh, a couple of weeks later, they, you know, showed up in my inbox and said, we approve the commercialization plan for this project. And that was it. And that's how the relationship started to get built uh, with the Air Force. But I would say TechLink Center really was the one that opened that door for us. Wow. So when you get that email back from the Air Force, I mean, what did that look like? Did they request changes on your technology plan? Did it set out licensing terms or costs or anything like that? Tell, tell me a little bit more about what happened after that. Yeah. So once you get approved for your commercialization plan, 
Um, that basically seals the deal on the commercialization plan. Then you have to go into negotiations around uh, what the contract's going to look like, all the payment terms, you know, how where you can license the technology to, uh, all of that stuff. Um, that takes a little bit of time to work through also, uh, the fine details. Um, and then once you, you know, sign off on what you want to do and how you're going to execute, there's really nothing left to do than begin to execute on those milestones, uh, to meet your obligations back for the government, uh, as a licensee of the techno of their technology. Um, so that that's about the process. And in fact, it's actually, um, I really enjoy the process of um, commercializing technology through the government. And I actually enjoy the whole process of working with the government, especially uh, it's funny, it's the Air Force and it's my former branch, uh, but it's been a fantastic experience. Um, They're really, really supportive and really obviously knowledgeable on the technology. And they give us a lot of guidance Um, whenever we run into issues, uh, we can get on the phone with them and I think here soon I'm going to have the opportunity to actually meet them um, in Ohio. So the technology came out of a uh, Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright Pat Air Force Base in Ohio. Um, And we just got into an accelerator program, Ocean Accelerator, uh, in Cincinnati. So I think there will be opportunities where I can, you know, take the drive um, to, to the Air Force Base and meet them and continue to build that partnership. Cool. So I want to do a deep dive on the technology in particular. Uh, it's called Bat Doc, and I wanted to see. Tell me what that stands for first of all, and then tell me a little bit more about how it was developed and and how Animal Cloud plans to use it. Bat Doc is just a long acronym for um, a battlefield um, triage kit that they uh, that the Air Force has. So the technology was originally developed for. Um, combat medics to use in the field um, or special forces, right? So if they're going to go into a dangerous situation, um, the idea is if someone is injured, a combat medic can put sensors on that individual that are able to read vital signs via Bluetooth and then stream those vital signs back to a mobile application and then begin to develop an electronic health record And then they can send that health record back to the uh, unit that would be taking the patient in to uh, work on his injuries. So our idea is essentially to take that same technology, put it into the hands of law enforcement, and then allow them to be able to monitor the health of their working animals. And then if anything goes wrong, that information can be created into an electronic health record and then sent back to the veterinarian that's responsible for that animal's care. Um, two functions of it that of bat doc that are really, really good is its ability to telemonitor uh, for all of the vital signs um, and tele triage on patients. So you can update records on illnesses, medications, um, you know, the injuries that the animal has sustained, um, document with pictures or recordings, and then you can create that into an electronic health record that can be preserved uh, into the animal's care profile. Fantastic. So is the U.S. Air Force still using BatDoc for humans? And like, are they still continuing to develop the software? They've just licensed off the the use for animals to, to Animal Cloud? Yeah, so they... Um, the program is in still full blown effect. So they're developing every year, coming out with new releases and new features, uh, optimizing the software for better performance. Um, and now we, the company Animal Cloud was just awarded a um, SBIR contract, which is a small business innovation research contract um, by the Air Force to go ahead and build out a military working dog program, health monitoring program um, for, uh, for that branch. So, uh, we're excited to begin our partnership again with the air force to develop the bat doc technology into more of a platform for, um, the health and wellness of military working animals. 
So all this has happened really fast. So you uh, just got the technology license just a, a few months ago. You're in it. You've been accepted into the Ocean Accelerator program, and you're you've you're in the process, or you've won an SBIR. This is all moving really quickly. What what has that process been like of of going from you know just responding to a uh, you know commercialization plan to having the company up and running here? Seems like in in record time. It feels like um, we've been in business for years, <laughs> and like I sometimes I check in in my professors, and they're like, "It feels like you've just been like in business for so long," and uh, we really haven't. We've uh, we're coming up on our one year anniversary, um, and it's really really exciting time to uh, have been able to build a team um, and uh, now get awarded this uh, contract with the Air Force and then go into this accelerator program and continue to grow out um, uh, our company and continue to press forward with our mission. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations on the early success. We're, we're definitely excited to see where this goes. Um, so as, as you say, working animals definitely seems like a place to start. And obviously, you know, we've seen the working dogs, right? The, 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 the drug dogs at the airport or for military uses, um, as, as security measures and whatnot. Um, also for, you know, equine, the horses, the mounted patrols, but are there other, are there other, uh, ways that are there other kinds of working animals, uh, dogs and horses where you think this could be helpful and useful? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, other than the military um, law enforcement, like the federal government, so inside the DOD or Homeland Security or DOJ um, or local law enforcement, I would think that um, being able to have this technology also used with service animals for either veterans returning with, um, you know, injuries, you know, mental health or physical injuries or, um, you know, children or citizens, whoever uh, would need an animal, um, a service animal for those needs, uh, this would be a great option for um, those owners of the animals. And then the people who are, you know, training the animals and getting them ready for, um, for their service, for, for what their life is going to look like. And then we were talking a little bit before the show too, about additional uh, applications in equine. You were talking about everything from racehorses to rodeo horses, any other, any other thoughts of where this application might be applied? Yeah. So, uh, we're expanding into the, uh, equine market. So we're looking to target, uh, event centers and traveling vets, um, in particular, because, um, this is a telehealth application. And so it's really good for field use. So if you're a veterinarian, you could go out check on the health of an animal, document that health on a tablet or a phone, uh, and then even monitor it um, back at your uh, veterinarian hospital or your office. And then also rodeos and event sitters too, because those animals travel around a lot and there's no documentation that goes from one vet to another. So if you could put um, electronic health records into the hands of that animal owner, um, that would be a huge benefit and it, and it solves a lot of problems that, uh, we talk about internally in the company, um, for these different customer segments. So do you think, uh, the portability of the EMR will, uh, hit animals before it hits humans? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, we're kind of seeing this way where, you know, it's kind of growing out, um, uh, almost in parallel, but we're getting the benefit of, you know, telehealth becoming so mainstream through the pandemic um, and just kind of moving it over to uh, animal health care. Makes sense. So I know you guys are really focusing on, you know, getting your product to market, but really focusing on canine and, and equine. But do you see uh, this being applied to other service animals or other areas in the future? Animal research uh, so going into university use would be uh, a huge benefit. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of, I think the next natural progression or the next step that we would want to take, um, for the company. Um, and then also another big, another big one would be going into, um, uh, livestock. So being able to work with cattle, um, dairy farms, uh, things of that nature to help 
uh, disease traceability in animals and then be able to put technology into the hand of people who are either working out in the field to quickly document what would be going on with a cattle to cut down on, um, you know, disease traveling through interstate commerce. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah. When you think about like mad cow and some of those diseases and how they wrecked, uh, you know, entire herds, uh, obviously you guys could have something that could potentially detect that and keep something like that from happening. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a very exciting uh, um, field or industry that we want to get into, um, livestock. Um, and it also helps, it could potentially have a huge benefits for uh, food insecurity, especially as we have a growing population um, and our natural resources, our land resources that these animals graze on. Um just to make sure that they're living healthy lives um, is would be terrific if that's something that we could pursue in the future. So what do you think success looks like for Animal Cloud? Our number one goal right now and our most rewarding aspect, um, and this is something we talk about with our senior leadership team at the company, is continuing to develop our internship program at the company. Um I really preach that we're a people first company and it's like we're people first that put animals first. Um, so uh, developing our internship program and giving um, our future technology and business leaders a rewarding experience where they can get uh, hands-on experience through either sales enablement, content marketing, um, cloud infrastructure, app development, database management, um, that's something that students all across North Texas are really, really craving and they want. And being able to develop that and provide that back is uh, our, our, our first priority. Um, and then I would say um, continuing to build a large organization um, that creates motivating work experience um, is, is something that I would, I would deem success on. And then, you know, if you kind of want to get out there, like a medium term goal for me um, that I want to do is eventually one day buy uh, a ranch and call it Animal Cloud Ranch um, and then be able to have dual use where we can develop technology that works for people, humans and our environment. And then it could also be a place for military vets um, that are, you know, parent that our parents and have kids or kids with disabilities could come and have equine therapy. Um, and a place for them to uh, relax at. Very cool. So one of the things that I think is interesting here is that one out of every 10 business owners in the United States is a veteran, uh, which, you know, you, you kind of think of the military as very, you know, you, you follow orders, you, you know, you fall in line, you, uh, you, you do what you're told, so to speak. Uh, but why do you think that is? Why do you think entrepreneurship is such a viable option for veterans uh, after their time of service? And and what makes Fort Worth an opti optimal location for veterans to start companies? Yeah, this is um, a really great question. I think um, veterans coming out of the military, they understand how organizations um, work. You know, they're part of a large organization with a lot of moving pieces um, but it all pulls together to accomplish a single mission. And I think that's really powerful that vets have, and they have that experience um, at a young age and, you know, develop throughout their career. Um, they also understand teamwork and camaraderie and how to put um, service before self. Um, and that's really, really important. Um, and they've also learned from the good and the bad, right? So uh, they've, had great leaders and they've also had bad leaders. So they know like what not to do and, uh, you know, what to do. So they have, they have both sides of, um, of that experience. Um, and Fort Worth is a really supportive entrepreneurial community. Um, and this community here, they really want to see everyone succeed. And I think that they know, um, that by, us succeeding as entrepreneurs, you know, the city of Fort Worth succeeds as well. Um, and everyone in Fort Worth is really passionate, passionate about this city. Um, and, you know, other than those reasons, I would say the cost of living in Fort Worth is really, really affordable. Um, it's a great location. You know, it's right next to DFW's airport, uh, international airport where you can fly anywhere in the world. Um, you know, great highway access, lots of fun and 
fun and uh, entertainment in the city. Um, it's really a big city, but it feels like a small city. Dylan, who is your favorite innovator in Fort Worth? I would say that uh, my favorite innovator right now in Fort Worth is uh, Sydney Phillips. Um, she is someone that uh, I went through the entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial uh, degree plan at TCU with. And um, she is very, very technology minded and um, uh, real estate minded. So she's a great entrepreneur in tech and, and real estate. Um, and to me, she's an amazing example of a student entrepreneur uh, and a female entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, I have a daughter um, and I think she's a great role model for um, little girls like her. Um, because of all the success and hard work that um, she's put into, um, you know, her most recent company, but you know, all the, everything she's done before it, uh, I, I was really impressed getting to know her. Very good. Very good. Well, we hope to have Sydney on very soon, actually. So uh, stay tuned for that episode. But Dylan, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about Animal Cloud, you can visit animal.cloud. That's www.animal.cloud. Cloud. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and leave us a review. We've also just launched a brand new YouTube channel, so you can find the same content on YouTube as well. Want to join the conversation? Follow us on social media at HSC Innovates. From the minds at Sparkyard, join the latest happy hour for entrepreneurs. It's called Yard Party. But what is Yard Party? It's a monthly happy hour to welcome entrepreneurs new to DFW or new entrepreneurs who are beginning their startup journey. Yard Party is the newest way to get plugged into the community of trailblazers and innovators and learn about resources that can set you on your path to success. For more information, go to sparkyard.co and head to the community calendar to learn more and to see what other great events are happening for entrepreneurs in Fort Worth. That's sparkyard.co and click on the community calendar. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers and Alex Branch. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch and our digital editors are Matt Hovlick and Summerlee Sherlock. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by UNT Health Science Center, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork.